So in this video, we're going to talk about using slope intercept form to model uh, real world situations here. Okay, we're going to do two examples um, and we're going to have to come up with a slope or rate of change for each situation. And we're going to have to come up with a y intercept for each uh, situation. Okay, now the y intercept in both these situations is going to be what we refer to as a fixed cost. Okay. Um, the slope, the rate of change, is going to be what we call a variable cost. All right, so let's look at example one. In example one, we want to rent a moving van. The company charges customers $20 up front plus 45 cents per mile that, you're, uh, that you drive. Okay, now the y-intercept, again, is going to be referred to as a fixed cost. So this $20 right here is a fixed cost. You pay that $20 whether you drive five miles down the road 500 miles down the road or all the way across country okay after that you have what's called a variable cost and that variable cost is going to be our rate of change here or our slope so that variable cost is 45 cents for each mile driven okay so you can see remember slope is a rate of change and rate of change is a, a value here or a cost divided by our x variable okay so our x variable is going to be miles driven and our y variable is going to be cost or dollars in this case okay so because my fixed cost here is my y intercept that's going to be b okay in my slope intercept form this 45 cent per mile variable cost is going to be my m or my slope so my equation is going to be y equals 0.45x plus 20 okay again this 20 is a fixed cost it's kind of like the starting point the lowest amount of money you're going to spend if you rent this van is $20 and from there it's only going to go up so that's why we're going to add that amount to this 20 okay so like we said the slope is going to be that 45 cents and in the context of this problem it means for each mile that you drive once you leave that uh, the lot the renter is going to pay an additional 45 cents okay the y-intercept like we said before that's going to be that fixed cost it's $20 okay and that's the initial cost. Again, the initial cost, the starting cost, however you want to think about that. The fixed cost, that's going to be, you know, if you drive, drive zero miles, you're still paying that $20 once you sign off to rent that van. Okay? So, you're going to pay $20 basically just to drive it off the lot. Okay? Now, we want to use the, the reason we want to come up with these equations is because we want to make predictions or we want to be able to problem solve here. And we want to be able to come up with a cost if we know how many miles we're going to be driving. So let's say you're going to move a distance of 200 miles. Okay, so that's how far the van's going to go uh, before you pull into the, the lot to return it. Okay, so we're going to use our equation y equals 0.45x plus 20. 200 miles is our distance. Remember that x coordinate is going to be miles driven. So we're going to replace x with 200. Okay, and then we're just going to use a calculator here. So when I multiply 0.45 times 200 you get 90 90 plus 20 is 110 okay so if you move a distance of 200 miles or if you drive that rental van a distance of 200 miles then you're going to have to pay 110 dollars the 20 dollars to leave the lot and the 45 cents per mile for those 200 miles okay so if an individual rents a truck and drives 200 miles they would have to pay 110 dollars all right now Let's say you had a, another company that you could compare that to. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons we need to be able to do this is we want to be able to compare costs. So maybe another company had a different price model. We could do the same thing, come up with an equation, all right, and then make a prediction about how much it's going to cost based off of our equation. And then we could make an economically smart, intelligent decision on which company to go with, okay? So now we're going to go to the graph and we're going to graph this situation and we can use that graph to make other predictions if we need to. Okay, so in example one, our equation was y equals 0.45x plus 20. Okay, so that was 45 cents per mile driven uh, and then the $20 just to drive off the line. Okay, so the main thing here, uh, you want to make sure your axes are labeled. So the x-axis is miles driven, the y-axis is the cost and that's in dollars. All right, and then our scale, we need to make sure we're good to go with scale here. So on the left, on the y-axis, each grid line is 10 miles. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on, okay? Um, you wanna make sure your scale has the values you need, 
okay? So our starting point uh, was at 20, and then when we drove 200 miles, um, it was $110. So I wanna make sure both those Y values are there so I can graph those, okay? On the x-axis, I went each grid line is 20, so this would be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and so on, okay? And again, we wanna make sure you know the, val the values that are in, uh, in the work that we did are present there so we can graph, okay? So uh, remember, our y-intercept here is 20, so I'm gonna plot that point there on the y-axis, okay? Now, we're using slope-intercept form, but it's gonna be really hard to go up like 0.45 when our scale is, is so much bigger here. So I'm not actually gonna use that rise over run concept uh, to come up with my second point. In our work in part D, we predicted how much it was gonna cost if we drove 200 miles, and we found that to be $110. So I'm gonna use that as my second point. So 200 miles up here to $110. So that's gonna be the second point on my graph, okay? Um, again, usually I would use slope if possible. It doesn't make sense in the context of this problem to do that. So you could find any other point along this line to plot, and it's just easiest to use the one we've already found and not do any additional work, okay? So I wanna connect those two points, and again, that goes on forever, all right? If you're driving farther than 200 miles, obviously we would have to change our scale here. Okay, um, so you can use this graph if you're only driving 80 miles. It should be somewhere here around $60. Again, this is not a straight line. I did the best I could, but if you're drawing the line on your, on your notebook or on your graph paper, you're going to want to use a ruler to make sure it's as straight as can be. So 80 miles should be somewhere around $60. I don't know if that's exact or not. You know, 120 miles should be somewhere around $80. It looks like it's probably going to be a little less than that. Um, but just gives you an idea of how much you would pay depending on how far you're driving this rental van. Okay, let's go look at number two. So pause the video right here and try to do example two on your own. Okay, it's going to be a lot like example one was, uh, but pause the video, uh, try you know to do your best, and then come back and check your work. Okay, so in example two here, we've got a catering company that specializes in weddings. Okay, they charge $500 uh, to cater the wedding, and then on top of that, they're going to charge $22 for each person served at the wedding. Okay, so my fixed cost again, I'm paying this $500 fee uh, just to book the caterer. Okay, so that's going to be my fixed cost, and remember that fixed cost is going to be your y-intercept in this case. All right, my variable cost or my rate of change is going to be that $22 per person. So it's a variable cost, it's a rate of change based on the number of people that you serve, so this is going to act as my slope. So my equation then is gonna be y equals 22x plus 500, okay? So like we said, the slope is gonna be $22. So for each additional person fed, the couple will pay an additional $22. And the y-intercept, like we said, is that fixed cost, that starting point, uh, which is gonna be $500, okay? So the initial cost, before you feed anybody is $500, okay? So it's like paying $500 just to book the caterer, all right? Now we wanna use this equation here uh, to make a prediction on how much it would cost to feed 150 people at your wedding, okay? So we've got our equation. We're gonna replace X with 150, okay? We're gonna do the math. 22 times 150, I think that's 300, or 3,300, excuse me. And when we add that $500 to that, it would cost $3,800 uh, for the food, for the catering at this wedding, okay? So if a couple has a wedding and wants to feed 150 people, they would have to pay $3,800. And again, you can use this for comparing caterers against each other and uh, make an educated decision, all right? So let's go to the graph. Again, we can use the graph uh, to make predictions for a different number. Maybe you've got a budget, you can't spend $3,800 on food, um, so you would think, well, I need to feed fewer than 150 people. So that's one of the reasons, one of the ways we can use the graph to help us make a decision. Okay, so let's go to the graph. All right, so the graph for number two, our equation was y equals 22x plus 500, okay? Uh, the x-axis, the x variable here was people to feed at the wedding. Uh, the y-axis was the cost in dollars, okay? Um, now, you want to build your scale based on the information that you found so far. So people to feed, uh, we made a prediction if we were going to feed 150 people. 
So I, I decided to go by 20 each time, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and so on. Uh, on the y-axis, the most we would spend based on the prediction we made was 3,800. So I just want to make sure I get to uh, 3,800 here on my graph. So I chose to go by 400 with each grid line. So 400, 800, 1,200, 1,600, 2,000, and so on, okay? If you chose to go by a different scale, that's that's awesome. You just have to be consistent, okay? You have to go up by the same amount on the x-axis each time, and then you can go up by the same amount on the y-axis each time. Again, just to reiterate, I'm going by 20 here, and I'm going by 400 here. So you can have a different scale for the x-axis than you do for the y-axis, but you have to be consistent on each axis um, respectively, okay? So, um, again, the slope here, this 22 is not gonna do me, if I'm going up by 400 here for each grid line, you know, how do I know how, how far up to go to represent 22? So I'm not gonna use that rise over run concept again. In most of the real world situations, you're not gonna do that, okay? Uh, so just be aware of that. And so you wanna be able to plot two points. Remember, you only need two points to graph a line. So um, my fixed cost, my starting point here, if I had zero guessed, I would spend about $500. So that's just slightly above that 400 uh, mark there. Okay, and then we said if I fed 150 people, so remember, this is 120, this is 140, this is 160, so 150 is going to be halfway uh, between here. It was going to be $3,800, so here at 150, I'm going to go up to 3,800, so remember, this is 36, so 3,800 should be right there in the middle of that square, okay? So that represents 150 people and $3,800, which would be the cost to feed that uh, 150 people, okay? So connect the dots. Again, on your paper, you wanna use a ruler. Again, I can't be very straight here. I do the best I can, but on your paper, use the ruler because you wanna be able to use this line. So maybe you can't budget $3,800 for food. So maybe you need to see, well, I need to feed fewer than 150 people. So I'm gonna come down this line and see how many people can be fed for how much money I might have, okay? Or maybe you've got a budget that's bigger than $3,800. Well, if that's the case, then you can invite more than $150. You can keep going along this line until your budget and the number of people you want to bring in and feed match up. Okay? So that's how you use slope-intercept form to represent or model real-world situations.